Hello, my name's Robert Adams. What I'd like to do is just do a very quick run through of the CD full steam ahead. Have a look at some of the cards that you can make, um, show you some samples and have a little look at what's on the CD. And perhaps if time permits, we'll do a little bit of crafting as well. Just give you my input from the CD as well. Okay, so I want to start off really by showing you what's on the CD. And we do have a little tutorial walkthrough tour that shows you exactly what's on it and you can follow that link uh, on the web page and that gives you a, a little bit more time as we look through every element on it. What I really want to do today is just explore uh, really the end samples, the end products, what we can do with it and give you some idea of how you and sort of suggestions for your card making as well. Okay so just briefly I'll show you uh, the main features on the CD. So just briefly on these printouts here, you can see these are the main uh, steam engines and tractors that we've got, and trains as well on the CDs. So there's a nice little mixture of everything there. And the famous ones, the Mallard, Flying Scotsman, we've got them all included as well. And so you've got, we've got two of these on there and we've got cabin shots, old trains, obviously steam trains, some in colour, some in black and white, and uh, steam tractors, etc. as well. So really nice collection. Now to go with that, uh, I've given you, as usual, our backing papers. And here we have our 20 backing papers. And these come also in a paler version of these as well, so that you can mat and layer. That's a technique I like to use as well. And then we've also got the graphics feature, because on that you can make your own cards up. You can mat and layer elements to create your own toppers, backgrounds, anything that you like really, and put text on as well if you want to. So those are the main elements that we're going to find on the CD-ROM. Now shortly I'd like to just do a little demonstration for you, and it's just my input of, of a little bit of crafting. But before that, what I'd like to do now is just um, pause for a bit and run through some samples, because I think it's a great way of showing you the elements on the CD and just an interpretation of how you can use it and create your own lovely cards. Now I've got a whole selection here, some I've done, most of them my lovely card makers have made for me as well. So it's a really nice input. What I like about having several people doing the cards is that everyone brings their own sort of unique touch to it. But I thought it would be nice to share these with you and perhaps comment on some of the things, um, that, that certain points that I like and uh, just really have a little chat about the cards. So we'll start off and now I've got a little pile here. Now with this card, we've got just a simple image. There's no decoupage on it and it's just placed on there with a border and used on the backing paper, the sort of metallic-y one. And we're using our all occasion dies here with the cogs, which I think work really well with it, and a spanner. I think that's really synonymous with, with steam trains. And as we open up, we've got the greeting inside there as well, some additional tools. And again, we're using our all occasions typeface on there just to use as a die to put on. But of course you can, if you want to, use the type on the CD as well. So these are just little extra embellishments to show you on that card. Now on this one, um, we're using it as an, an element here from the CD. And again, another die, one of those actually a clock die there, but with a little image on the inside of the train there. And again, you could then put a greetings inside the card if you wanted to as well. Now on this card, Again, we've got that lovely sort of aged look to it as well. You can use your inks, you can distress, uh, and again, using the pocket watch just to, to create a little bit of an element there with the gears as well. It's very much a, you know, a mat and layering and building up old train tickets, a little bit of railway track as well. Just gives that lovely sort of vintage feel to it. Now, on this one, uh, again, it's, it's nice and simple, a very, very thin decoupage. If I can just tilt that up so you can see on the camera there. So it's a very thin one, probably only about one mil pads, just enough to, to lift it up, um, but keep it nice and flat for postage as well. And again, we've just got best wishes. We're using our dies here and also our trellis corner die. Now I rather like that because that, to me, again, it invokes the feeling of the old train station, you know, sort of lattice that they would have and a sort of trellis edge around the architecture near the, near the roofing. 
But all in all, a lovely card. Now, now just something here, and this is a, a point to note, this is done on matte paper. And one of the little things, and again, the first demonstration I'm going to show you, that I've worked with both matte and gloss, and I'll demonstrate that later, because I think sometimes the steam engines benefit perhaps being in a, in a shinier paper or photo paper. Now, with this one, we've got, again, our best wishes, some cogs, and the image kept nice and simple with one mil foam pads is to show you the decoupage on that there. Now, not every train could be decoupaged. What I want to show you with this card, because I've, I've put, where applicable, what I call the stackupage on the CD-ROM. And that enables you to build up the layers like this. And I'll just tilt that. You can see how they're built up. Now, I think this is one of those techniques that you either love or hate. One of the reasons I love this is because, A, it gives you a, an interesting image quite quickly, but also, and I've got the card buried away somewhere, and I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll get to that one. In fact, even as we're talking, I'm going to dig it out because it's a great way to show you. What I like about the stackupage, now I know we can't see all the detail underneath, we get the overall image, but you do get smaller elements. And if I can just show you this little card here, this is one of the reasons I thought was great because you can take with the stackupage elements out from the train. This one we've zoomed in and come to the top, uh, to, to the front of the train rather. And I think that's a fantastic use. So if you don't like the stackupage, you don't have to use it. But look at the various elements as it crops in slowly because you might be able to use those within your card making as well. They're quite useful for that. And again, we're just using the dies here as our our embellishments there. Now this is a card that I like um, and it's got that lovely retro feel to it. I've gone for the black and white and again we've got the cogs, the chain, a little bit of rope around it, again all the dies, the all occasion dies. But what we have got is this lovely sort of retro black and white feel, that sort of invocative feeling of steam and trains with a black and white image there. I really like that. Okay, now this card here, I'll try and show it to you in all its glory, uh, actually goes like that. And what we can do now uh, is just see really everything that's going on. Now on this one, we've used the uh, one of the steam... Now, these are actually t now that's an interesting point. Is it a steam train? Because it actually moves, a steam locomotive, it moves under its own, own steam, no pun intended. When they're static, they're called engines. When they move, they're trains. So this is a very early one, um, and it looks to me a little bit like a variation of the Stevenson's rocket there. That aside, um, we've used the, uh, I think the, uh, Chris, one of my lovely card makers, has done this one. She's used the Twister template, but done it as a... Uh, easel card like so. I think that looks really effective. Now I, I like I love all things steam, uh, steam and trains and I do like these older engines like this. To me they look really fascinating and, and I love that. Again she's made good use of the dies here and um, we've got the alphabet, we've got the dogs and, uh, and the age in there as well. So um, very very nice card on that one. Okay, what I'd like to do now is a little bit of crafting um, and just talk about some of the things on the CD and just some of my input, my sort of impressions on some of the card making as well. Um, we've had a look at some of the samples. I'd like to just make a card, have a look at some more samples, give you some inspiration as well. So what I'd like to do is start off and I've got a card here. Okay, I'm starting off using one of the backing papers here. And again, I've just used the tinted version, the lighter version of the full colour, and that is a backdrop. And I've printed out the main element here. Now, I've used a matte paper because what I thought would be nice is to go for a matte paper. And then with the decoupage, as you can see here, I can use the shiny paper. And so that, that gives a lovely contrast. We get the more natural painterly effect at the back of the train there. And just uh, a couple of things to note. Um, one is that when I was printing out the decoupage, I realized if you don't want to waste ink, you can stop. Once you've cleared the trains, you can see here I stopped and the paper's probably a wee bit cheaper than the ink. So that was something else to think about as well. Um, what else? Or oh, the other thing, just to show you, we've got our, our sort of our train and our elements here. And last one, at least, I thought we'd go for a decoupage version on this card 
as well. So we could build that up. Now I've got the, uh, the main element here and what I've done is cut the whole train out to make it shiny and just kept the little bush here at the back so that I can then put that on and then we've got that lovely contrast as, as we go through there. So initially that's what I'm going to do now and we'll just take off the pads here and then I can place that down onto my image. So that's my, as I said, my basic image down there. Now I've used my foam pads here, so sort of fairly thick foam pads. And I will just pop that down over the existing image, just laying it gently there. So I've got a little bit of wiggle room as we line up towards the base there. And that will just sort of naturally go down. And then the next layer, just to finish off, comes up on that. Now you can vary this, obviously postage being a consideration, you may want to keep it a little bit lower, um, but I've, I've gone for a sort of slightly thicker uh, stack of parts effect then, if I just tilt that up you can see it. I think you agree that gives a really lovely effect. So we've got those sort of lovely natural backgrounds, the painting in the background there, and this lovely sort of metallic shiny steam train coming through. The last just one way of doing it. That's just some sort of my serving suggestion as it were. A couple of things to note with that and I've got um, if I can just bring this one into shot. This is everything on the on the paper on the photo paper so we can sort of see a contrast of how the train would look uh, on that and it looks lovely but I just like this way that it just the colours just become slightly richer as well when you use the photo paper it does affect it but um, you get this sort of a natural soft effect and then the, the shininess of the train and uh, something which you may want to experiment so that I think makes for a lovely card that's a, a sort of a two layer decoupage on there nice and simple to cut out and very forgiving we can see the whole train shiny and although I've got a tiny little bit of shiny bush at the back do you know what no one will ever notice so the next thing to do now is to pop this onto our card and for this I'm going to use a little bit of tape you could have stuck this down first if you wanted it's just I like to do things every which way make sure I've got the opening right um, and again you've got lots of things uh, choices here I was toying with the idea of popping it onto a little bit of mirror board perhaps a little outline or something but I rather like the idea of just keeping this with the sort of the muted colours and then creating that lovely sort of shiny train effect there in the front. Okay so the next thing to do is just pop a greetings on there and I, I've again gone unashamedly for one of my dies all occasions happy birthday and I've used the gold here and uh, I've used it with the sort of uh, mottled effect. I call it what a cigarette paper, like in the old days, and used to be in the packet, um, rather than being shiny. But you could match the colours of the train if you wanted to as well. Uh, it's really up to you. I'm just putting a few dots of glue onto there, and then just line that up like so. Okay, so I've got happy birthday here now. I think that looks lovely. Um, but we could do, we could personalise it a little bit more. And uh, I think I've got something I'd like to do here. I'm just putting some little dots of glue. Um, let's just say it's perhaps for a younger person or even someone a bit older. There we go. So use one of the numbers. And I have number nine on the front there. <laughs> now we also have the inserts as well. They're text editable and they can go into the inside if you want to. Again, that's all on the CD for you. What I'd like to do now is just have another look at some other cards. And again, just sort of giving you, I think, hopefully some inspiration, thoughts and ideas shared from sort of one crafter to another. And again, a whole batch of cards made by different people um, so that we get a nice sort of cross section and view of the sort of things you can do. Now on this card, again, it's all done with a shiny paper, matte and layered, a nice little silver board around it, and then using the stones as a background from one of the backing papers. Uh, I've got a happy birthday, bits of chain. I just think that looks lovely. It's a really, really lovely card. And if we just open up, we've got our greetings on the inside as well. 
Okay, again, a whole variation of things on this one. A little bit of the stopwatch, a clock. But what we've got are the various images. And you don't have to stick with just one. We can see we've got the train and then we've got the uh, smaller engine part of the stack equipage put on there from another image as well. And this is one of, one of my favourites. I, I just love this sort of atmospheric station. Now, I've done this as a stack equipage. I know, and I apologise for in advance for people that don't like it. I think it works quite well. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to do a, um, a decoupage. Now, on this particular one, memory serves me right. I think I've given you both because I rather like the way that we could stack it and zoom in and use different elements from it, as I've explained earlier about the other card. Uh, but you can also then do it as a traditional decoupage card as well. So that's one of the rare occasions when I've just done both. Making good use of the cogs, again, our all occasion cogs there, and just a good range of different backing papers to work with as well. And if I can just drop the other cards, just to show you, this turns into an easel card as well. And I think that's a lovely idea, of just using the tools. And again, you can put your greetings along the base there. And it, it'll stand up beautifully. And a really, really lovely card on that one. Again, on this one, we've got all the components there, the train, uh, mat and layering, using the backing papers, a little bit of bling here. And it just goes to show you, you can really go to town as much or as little as you like with those. Now, just moving on to this section over here. There are nice, simple greetings here for you. And again, just a simple uh, train image, very, very light decoupage, but uh, Dawn, again, of our lovely card makers, she's put some acetate over here, which is the snowy one. If I just tilt that onto the side, you can see it gives a little curve. You can make out the decoupage on it. Only one mil pads, very, very light, but that really has that lovely wintry feel, I think. It's a fantastic card for you there. Again, you could have a greetings on the inside, and this is just pulled off of the CD and you can type in and put any greetings in that you wish to on there. Now it's not all about steam trains, we've got steam tractors as well for the steam tractor lovers out there and the stationary engines, pumps and a few other bits and pieces. So there is a lovely sort of cross section there and again we're just using the cogs here and a simple thank you on that card there. Another one of my favourites, again, black and white. I do like that, and it is kind of evocative of the area of steam, isn't it? A sort of black and white image. And this is just using two layers of the stack of parts because, again, <laughs> I'm going to convert you all to it. Um, you don't have to use all, all five of them if you don't want to. Just do two. Just step it in. Use it as a border. And here we've got this lovely little bit of mirror board behind it, very thin, a delicate border. And then just one, two layers of the decoupage stuck on um, and they're not even done with foam pads it's just the, the size of the paper just lifting that up if I can show you there but creates this wonderful effect so that's again is another way of, of working with it for you now here we've got uh, a lovely card almost looks like a Mondrian snip painting black and white using the images from the graphics package now I've got a demonstration to show you in a moment about that and uh, if you look at the tutorial walkthrough tour, I take a little bit more time and care over the uh, graphics package because that's something a little bit of tutorial for you. It's really simple to use, but please, please have a go with it. It, it works very, very well. And again, in the same light, we've got our sort of vintage retro ones here, and we're using the cogs. And if you put a little brad in there, and I, again, tilt it, stick a couple of them down you can actually have some fun and make some moving cards if you want to you can see we've all been playing with this so much we've kind of worn them out a little bit and that's again just using our all occasion uh, cog die there and this card here really love just to show you again we're using the vintage section um, and just making little cards out of it on a lovely gray background matte and layering simple as that stack apaging these stackipaging, decoupaging really, those little elements there. And again, if I just tilt that onto the side, you can see, just to raise the panels up, oh, I think it's a lovely card, really, really stunning. Again, you could have a greetings in there if you wanted to. And on this one, Barry, 
one of my lovely card makers there, has um, used the gardening set here and he's created this coal effect. I think it looks really nice. It's just crumpling up a little bit of black paper there to create the coal. Black and white paper, black and white image, but then the, the wall behind it and uh, birthday greetings on the top in green. Again, just, just pulling out colours around the border for that. And whoops, on this one here, um, again, what, <laughs> another card from Barry. And he's created a bridge, <laughs> a viaduct or aqueduct viaduct across the river there uh, using our, our trellis there. And that just shows you, um, again, as a serving suggestion of how you can use all of the, the sort of paraphernalia that you've gathered together to make your card making um, that, that sort of bring in the elements to, to have a go at creating something a little bit different. For this demonstration, I want to just show you something that I've done using the graphics section and just done some simple matte and layering to make a, a, my own toppers a slightly different image. Well, the world's your oyster with that, but I just wanted to give you a little idea of what you can do with it. Again, the walkthrough tour's got everything on it and that's worth having a look. It's just a simple case of matte and layering, copy and paste, so you're technically digitally matte and layering. So, what I'd like to do, as I said, let's just run through this card. It's very, very simple, um, but I hope it will show you a little bit, give you perhaps some inspiration to have a go yourself. Okay, I'm beginning with one of the background papers. I've done the tint or the lighter version, uh, just the rusty paper. And again, I could put my greetings in there if I wanted to. So that's my first layer printed straight off the computer. The next layer, again, I'll just use some photo paper. You can see it's shiny. It's of the metallic looking paper. And with my trusty glue pen, I'm just going to stick that down. I'm trying to keep my cards as sort of flat as possible now for postage reasons, and I'm sure many of you are doing the same as well. Uh, in the old days, I'd probably be putting foam pads on and building this right up. But for this exercise, I want to show you, you don't necessarily have to do that. Now, this next layer would probably benefit from just lifting up slightly, and we could put some on there. But again, I'm just going to stick this down, and this is one of the panels which I've done uh, taken from the graphics package and just blown it up to the size that I want it. I'm just going to mat and layer this, put it a little bit closer to the top and the bottom there, stick that down. If I show you now, you see we're just building up the images. Okay, so where does the computer part come in? Well, this is it. What I've done is taken one of the postcards, then a train, and just superimposed and just put one on top of the other. It's as simple as that. It's digital matte and layering. Because this image has what we call a PNG, or it's got a transparent background, that will just drop on on top. And in this instance, a couple of foam pads, and I can stick this down. Now, I really like this. It's so simple to do. And I could have put, I've got lamps, I've got so many things I could put on there. And I thought, no, I won't get carried away. I'll keep it simple. But just as simple as that, is a lovely little image that you can create for a topper for your card. And so I really would encourage you to use that simple graphics. You can see there, I was just popping that on with my foam pads, though the rest of the card is quite flat. That just gives me a really, really lovely effect, I think. And so the next thing to do is just putting our greetings on there. Now uh, again, you can do anything that you like. I'm going to go and use my vertical lettering here, I think down the side, so let's have a look and see. We'll go for, make sure I've got that the right way round. Happy birthday. <laughs> and incidentally, I find a little bit of glue on there doesn't go amiss, obviously, to hold it on. I'm using a little bit of Cosmic Shimmer here and just a few little dots of glue on there is all you need because it will actually just spread itself out afterwards. So I put that onto there, like so. And then you can have a little bit of sort of tissue nearby if it does spread, but sometimes it's better just to let it dry and then peel away what you don't want, as it were. So I thought I'd go for a happy on that side, and we'll come and do a birthday on this one. And again, a similar technique, I'll just put a few dots of the glue on. You can use anything that you like. I find little quickie glue pens work well, even sometimes using my trusty tape pen and just running a little bit down as well. 
but I like the glue. It dries quickly and it allows me to position things a little bit more if I need to as well. So there we go. And this is using our all occasions greetings. That's the happy and the birthday in the vertical. And there we go. That's the finished card. It's nice and simple. It's really all about mat and layering. But the essence of this was to use the computer to create the topper here at the front, just to mat and layer. I did have, as I said, other elements. Um, I've had a, there was a lamp on there and bits and pieces, but I decided just to keep it sort of nice and simple. But really, the essence of that is to give you an idea of what you could do with it. There's lots of lovely papers on there. Off the top of my head, I think we've got 20 or so different sort of textural backgrounds that you can blow up to full size paper as well. Don't forget, you don't have to just keep them as little elements. They'll all go up to really large size. OK, so that demonstration, I hope, will uh, inspire you to have a go at using the basic graphics package. Well, I hope this video has given you a little bit of inspiration and a sort of an insight into the CD and you've perhaps got some ideas from the different cards that we've looked at just to give you a kind of what I call my serving suggestion and I've put a few sort of hints and tips along the way as well but I think the beauty of this of any CD of any crafting project that you undertake is that you bring a bit of yourself into it as well so obviously your ideas your cards your creations and you know the people that they're going for um, and who's going to receive it but I, what I like about the CD is I think and I'm sort of nailing my colors to the mask it's very much for the men here one for the boys perhaps a, you know someone who's mad about trains perhaps worked on the trains or whatever, uh, but there will be something for someone in there. Someone likes trains, British steam trains, I'm pretty sure you're going to find something there to make some really nice cards. And there's lots of images in it. And I'm gonna bang on about the graphics package again. Don't forget that because that then gives you an infinite supply of cards that you can make from this as well. Anyway, enjoy your crafting and enjoy the CD. Take care, bye-bye.